Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. You think you know your stuff? We'll get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at a weekly prizes at a share of 200 k $200,000 is ridiculous. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in the action. Bet online. The game starts here. He's here we got our AEW uh, fan. He's a true fan. You've watched every show, haven't you? Yes, I've watched. Well, Wait, well uh, every uh, Rampage, Dynamite. Rampage. Yeah, every Diamond Dynamite I've definitely watched. Every right. collision. Some, some collisions. 90%. Fewer Rampage. Uh, good, Rampage. And then Rampage. Rampage for like 50% right. of them. 50% Rampage. Okay, let's let's talk about AEW. Um, so the, the, did, what was the joke? Get the numbers up for us, please. 702. 702, which I, which... Can I it's see the quarter of, it's, hours? It's either what? or, either or, disappoint or a good number because Caitlin Clark was in a playoff game. So you obviously she's been a significant ratings draw against anything else on TV, and I'd like to see what happened around nine thirty, because about twenty after nine, okay, Caitlin Clark was uh, what do you call it, or like like forty with about forty minutes left in Dynamite. The sun and the fever, the, the the sun went on a the fever went on like a 10, 12 point run and took the lead. They were down by ten points, so there was like there was like a good comeback with Kate Clark. Yeah, um, there, there was a dip at that nine fifteen to nine thirty. Okay, yeah, and, well, well, yeah, okay. So let me, but let me tell you, okay. So I'm gonna get this. We'll go over the show. There's really not a lot to talk about because they, this the show was advertised as a big show with a lot of title matches. Wasn't it their fifth so, year anniversary? Yeah, but it wasn't. There wasn't like a lot of vignettes and stuff. And this was just a show that they had hyped these matches for a while. These are the matches. All Can right? I tell you real quick before we start? The most interesting to me is why did not they not have MVP come out at the nine o'clock hour? Because they had their. They went to the ring with their tag match. They, they actually that that was their folk their feature match on the show. In my opinion, they actually did it right. A couple minutes before nine o'clock, they were going to the ring. All right, which is, which is supposed to do with your top thing, but but the show started off once again. I have no clue why they do this. They hyped the show for a while. They did not have any package at the beginning of the show explaining things that have been going on or just nothing. They went straight to Nigel McGuinness coming to the ring. We didn't know if Brian. This is so. I, I can't stand when they do stuff like this where you don't know if the guy's going to come out. Nigel McGuinness is dressed, ready to wrestle, and. They're acting like they don't know if Brian Danielson is there. Like, why would you like? Could you imagine this is the UFC and the guy got ready to see and people said, "Hey, did the other guy get here yet?" It's like, I don't know. Like, would you even get dressed? It's like, of course not. You know, so, this is so this is silly in my opinion. So they do the old school thing. Let, where let me real, real quick, yeah. Sorry, because there's you know with Zoom, it's different. Do you still see the quarters or do you see the other thing I'm looking at? I see the other thing. Okay, so it just jumps screens. Okay, yeah, so I also I wanted to say for the guy that asked for ticket info, there was 8,319 tickets distributed. And as you can see, the last three years of Grand Slams, 19,079, 13,321, 11,263. So this is a big difference from well, yeah. the first Grand Slams. Plus, there's no, there was no, I mean, let's be honest. You got no, you got no MJF. You got no Edge. No Sasha. Is, uh, no Sasha, no Punk. No, you know, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. You, what, wow, you didn't put Sasha. Yeah, no Sasha on this show. No Jericho. Oh, no you would Swerve. think that that big signing that they would have. No Okada. Not only like, that. You, you thought, only, thought, I mean, that's good. Like, I don't, I don't mean, know. Like, yeah. <laughs> not only that, bro. The biggest prison is the product's not hot like it used to be. Right. So and Nigel, also returning to the same place year after year after year after year, fans are right. going to get burned out. It's right. the same thing out here in Vegas. Well, they they yeah. did the first pay per view after the pandemic at T Mobile Arena, and it was packed. Yeah. And then after that, it was lower and then lower. And it's the same thing. I mean, I think you got to just explore different markets. And that setup so, was, was kind of whack because previous ones made it look and seem like a big event. And this looked like any other dynamite. It, it did look like any other dynamite. There was no, you, there was no like big building feel, you know, at all. So, Not so basically Danielson eventually comes out. They have a, they have their match, bro. I'm sorry. Nigel did this spot where he had Daniels in the corner. Where he was like slapping him, bro. He looked like he was love tapping him, like he was like like a yeah, that was like brutal. Sissy. That was horrific. I'm like, yeah. well, dude, what are you? And then Danielson smacked him in yeah. the face. Yeah. And I think Brian was actually hot that 
looked so weak that he shot it. He smacked him for real. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, but that, but it made bananas it look good, but it just highlighted, but bro, come on, Nigel's like, you know. But later, like, DI, there was also some, some of the punches Brian was throwing in the, in the mount of position were kind of weak. And I was thinking like, maybe it's just two guys that know they both had head trauma issues. And maybe there's, I, I, yeah, I don't know. This, some, I don't know. They did their typical match, but then this is a typical Brian Danielson match. He sold like he was hurt for a shoot, like had nerve damage in his arms or something, and was selling the story. That's that he so overdone. Like, it's it, but he, every match he has, he, yep. he, does, he does something like that. And it's like, bro, his work. And the thing is, his work is solid and good enough that you don't have to go this extra thing to make everybody think like you're really hurt for a shoot because your work, your work looks better than than ninety percent of the guys on that show. Like like from a from a solid working standpoint, you know. But he put put him in the bell lock, and the, the McGinnis said thank you, and tapped out. So I don't know what the you know whatever. Yeah, I think it's I, just, I, swear I had, minutes, I had to I had to rewind it a couple of times. I thought he had said, and then I was like, no, he said thank you. Yeah. I thought that was I thought it would have been way better if he said. What did you What did you think of this segment, Harry? I think it was a little too long. I mean, well, I then, well, it's not over yet because then it gets ridiculous. Christian comes out because Daniels is selling his arms like he's got nerve damage. He's got the contract for to sign the cash in. He opens the contract. He's got the pen. Kip Sab I'm not lying on this. I saw Kip it. Sabian sneaks up behind him and grabs the pen. So Danielson can't sign the contracts of the match. So the match is like Bro, that arm. sounds 100%. He goes and runs after him. Runs to the back, they go through the curtain, and Pac and Claudio are standing there like ominously, like blocking him from like like grabbing that pen for like chasing Xavier down to grab the pen. And I was like, oh, Harry, really? Bro, oh, that God. could have only come from the mind of Tony. He what, thinks what did that, you think uh, of this spot, Harry? Trying to do too much. <laughs> I mean, why? Well, why? Let, Harry, the let me Sabian has has been nothing in AEW TV yeah, for a say. long time. Yeah. Why the heck? I know that they've been trying to keep him involved, like in some of the there there was a pretty decent vignette on collision, if I recall correctly, with Christian and his family, and then Kip Sabian coming in. It, it was interesting, but it wasn't anything like, oh snap, that's gonna be cool. That's and what then I was this happened. To... Bro, let's be honest. Okay, this is for but the story you wanted to tell there, okay? Is that they don't the, the Blackpool Combat Club does not want him cashing in. Brian Danielson is selling in the ring. He's his, his arm sink. He sees Krisha walk out. All right, bro. This would have just been just have Claudio and and what's his name walk out huh. and stand right in front of Christian. Okay, then take him out. Maybe he, what's going on here? Then Luchasaurus and what's his name comes out. Wayne. Okay, and there now you have a face off between two heel factions that are like serious. And Brian Danielson is in, bro. I'm sliding out. I'm climbing the rail. I'm getting out of here. You know, because I've heard. So it's like, you know, bro, that that would have been so much like a a better way to shoot. Yeah, right. Have Moxley come out and attack Brian Danielson while he's in the ring. Or something like that. Yeah, whatever. I I, you know, I don't know. But but that was yeah. They were just trying to do too much. They were trying to do too much. Let me tell you something. I wasn't into this feud. Old school fans are, because this is a feud from like 15 years ago. But that's the problem with this company. They assume you know this. No. And so I was not into this. Also, again, the same question I asked last week. Why is Danielson wrestling Nigel and not Darby? Okay. And I thought it was so hokey and so sophomoric of running up and taking the pen and the guy running after him. Okay, this is like high school. Do you, do you think this Not gets even heat? elementary? You think this so, gets heat? Come on, bro. All right, so it's, then we go to Hook against Roderick Strong. You know what? This Hook is green, okay, but he he does come across as a lot tougher than his size because when he throws strikes, he he throws them with with some with some em- emphasis, like he's like he's you know. Like he's throwing with, with, some, with some authority is the word I want to use. But this was a decent match. But you, bro, I just I can't get into Hook's matches because he's got like a ninety five percent winning percentage or ninety, and he's like a small guy. And like I assume he's going to win every single match. So there's never really like, any like doubt. Yeah, it's like win. him and Daniel Garcia trained together. Nothing. Right. Whatever so, happened to Daniel Garcia? They put all this time into him. Where is this? 
guy. He's still in the mix kind of with MJF, but MJF got hurt for a shoot and had to go away. So you can't do something with somebody else well, while he comes back? Well, they're, they're having trouble with the guys they have on the show as it is. So Now let so me just say one last story. thing about this match. Well, let me tell you about the finish. So they, he, he beats him. Then Strong offers him a handshake. Hooks accepts it. And Strong hugs him. And the T-Mac surprised that Strong shown respect for Hook and he went to the ropes and then Hook left the ring and was interviewed by Tony at ringside. Shivani said their FTW title was introduced by Taz in 1998 in the Elks Lodge. And Hook said all good things must come to an end. And on behalf of his family, Hook thanked every wrestle, wrestler who competed for the championship as well as the fans who supported it and announced that the title was officially retired. And he handed the belt to Taz. And that was that might have been the best <laughs> part of the show, whole, whole show. <laughs> right. Bro, Harry, what'd you think so of I don't know if you guys saw clips or heard of this, but in the last press conference after the uh, last pay-per-view, a reporter straight up asked uh, Hook a question. And in the question, he said that title was brought in as a joke. And then Tony Khan interrupted him and gave him a big history lesson on the championship. And it was not a joke and this and that. Oh, he interrupted Hook. No, no, no! Interrupted the question from oh, the, the, the question because oh, the question was the like, oh, "Hey, this title was brought in as a joke," and then, then Tony interrupted the guy that was asking the question and defended the title big time. So it's super interesting that a, less than a month later, they're retiring the championship again. <laughs> yeah, but the title. <laughs> let me, put it yeah. but the let title me just say two the, things. Okay, let on. me just say two things. First of all, why is Strong hugging this guy if he's a uh, heel? Number one, no, he, that, no I was like, he, "What he, is he, this?" Yeah. And Taven and Bennett too. Right. Number two. Right. Why are they hugging this guy? Okay. Like you, you do away the whole heel aura. Okay. And this was the best move they made because nobody cared about the belt meant nothing. Okay. And, and they have too many belts to begin with. The only bad part, it only took them five years to figure it out. But yeah. And because Hook had a belt, that's when everybody assumed he was never going to lose a match with it. Until he lost to Jericho. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just to bring up the Danny Garcia thing, I saw reports that he was supposed to win the, the match against MJF, but he hasn't re signed with yeah. AEW. Yes. So that's why he lost. Uh, yeah, Meltzer uh, has reported that a AEW is not as confident as they once were Garcia will resign. And he said, as far as what's going to happen with him, I'd say this I'd say the almost certainty or strong confidence that he was signing. I wouldn't say it's as strong, but I wouldn't say that he's leaving either. But it's not as strong as it was a month ago. He All might right. leave. <laughs> so, like, wow. All right. So next we have the big tag match that everybody's raving about online. This is a great match. But I'll be I'll, I'll be honest. I'll tell everybody this is not my style of work that I like. It's a style that their fans on the show love. A lot of sequences. A lot of spots where guys happen to be in a position where they need to be all the time for a a move, a lot of random no selling out of the blue, which I'm not a fan of. They did, they did, bro. They, like there was a spot where one they hit like a they went for a power bomb and Jackson hit the guy with the sit out the sit out face buster. Then a the guy came flying in and gave gave Osprey a, a what do you call it? a Canadian destroyer. Okay, Osprey popped right up and no sold and gave him the elbow thing on the thing, and then they all sold. I'm like that. I just, that, like that type of stuff, that that's not for me. Like I, like no selling a random Canadian destroyer in the middle of a match out of nowhere, and you just completely no sell at all and hit a move, another move two seconds later. That's not that's not my style. Fan, the fans of that did love this match, but so then it gets it, it gets the, the problem with this match. In my opinion, was we have to tell the story of the ridiculousness of why on earth Osprey and Fletcher are still with Callus if they're baby faces. Callus tries to hand. Fletcher a weapon to use, okay? He's gonna he's thinking he used it, but then Osprey grabs his arm, won't let him use it, and basically that costs him the match. And they lose V triggers and stuff and they lose the match. And the gimmick was is that you know they, they wouldn't cheat for callus. And you know, Osprey yelled at callus and said, bro, it's like come on, ha, well, I I don't like Don Callis, like he didn't really do anything to like not be a heel anymore other than like be friendly to these guys. Like he's still acting like a heel, which makes that to me, it makes these baby faces look kind of dumb. Why are you still with this guy? He's a bad guy. Well, what, what do you think about this whole dynamic here? 
I mean, he's technically Osprey isn't a part of the Don Callis family anymore. He just did it as a favor to Kyle Fletcher and he tried to, I, I like the storyline. I like the, well, not the storyline, but the way that they worked it where it's like Osprey's like, no, don't cheat. And Fletcher thought about it. The match, honestly, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I know Disco, you're not a fan of it, but I'm like, when the Young Bucks get in the ring, and it has been very criticized that them as champions, they haven't had a lot of in-ring action. When they're in there and they got a dancing partner like they did now with Osprey and with Fletcher, those two guys can simply, if if with a tag team that isn't as great in front of them, they still have a great match. When they have two guys of the quality of Osprey and Fletcher, they're just going to kill it. And they did on, on Wednesday, and I really enjoyed the match. I just don't like rick knox i mean right. you didn't mention it but he missed a spot with osprey pinning the guy and i'm like man come on if you're just have knox be like the heel referee that's always in the young bucks matches and the that he's helping the young bucks because he's just i don't know if it's a shoot or if it's a work but it just it's annoying watching him mess up that well much. if it was a work they would be drawing attention to it and they never do right unless what well, jr always when they Cody, you gonna count on this? So, I Hold really up the numbers, Joe. This this match lost considerable amount of viewers, by the way. I really like this match. All four of them bought it. My question is: Do the Young Bucks actually need these straps? No. It was probably the best Bucks match I've seen in months, bro. When I probably saw their second match in months, actually. Well, yeah. I I I I bro. When I saw Callus bring the screwdriver. I thought, uncle, ugh, and good grief. I mean, this. I'm sure the same guy that wrote Stealing the Pen wrote this with the screwdriver. Like, bro, it doesn't get any heat. Do you not understand that? Do you think it's because your idea does? And, bro, n- nice way of using callus instead of putting on the microphone to get heat. He kind of comes off like a sap most weeks. So next thing, the, ratings, guy, the, the numbers are up. It does look like they went down. Yeah, ratings hooked went up. They went up a little bit for this Bucks match, though. I yeah, think twenty nine thousand so, people up. So I don't, I don't know that this next segment. I don't know if they actually shot this at the show, because the conglomeration comes out. Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, Rock and Merrill. Mark Briscoe does all the talking again. Walks off. O'Reilly says nothing. And there's a little interaction there with Renee Paquette and, and Orange Cassidy at the end where he's like acting like nonchalant. And like they're, they're hyping up Matt. I don't, I, can Kyle O'Reilly get a word in maybe one week? He did say something, like, but it's always the same uh, thing. He repeats something he says or right. tries to be funny and he's not kind of like This is Joe. like, you know, I mean, for let somebody, you know what they should do? They should, like, I, I spoke about this before, like maybe two, three weeks ago. That, that's how often they've been doing this, this segment. Like every week they have a segment with these guys. Is that at some point one of these guys should cut Briscoe off and say, Hey, hey man, can I get a word in? And just start speaking. And then the people are looking at him like, you know, like what he's like. And then he says, Hey, bro, these guys does all the talking for us every week. I, you know, hey, we all can talk oh, too. Well, they're baby like, faces. Like, Nobody's gonna say that. Just you know? give a guy a line. Oh, and by the way, now Rocky Romero is part of the conglomeration. Uh, yeah, he's, the he's, he's, what do you think about that name? He's must see. The, the name is super. Let me tell you what I think about this name. It's so it's ranked behind Pure Fusion Collective, in my opinion. That's why I, I would, rank uh, I rank conglomeration. Or the Power Twins. How about that one? Or what are the I Terror would, Twins? Harry, would you agree with this? I would kazoo you, the name, and I would triple kazoo the 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 faction because I'm not. Well, I'm not invested in it one bit. Let's be honest here too about the 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 brisk the the young bucks. They're not drawing. Okay, tell me if you agree with this. With the outrunners versus the maximum male model guys, with one of those teams with the, as having the tag team belts, would that be more entertaining television? One hundred percent. Yeah, right I mean, now like it the, would because the only bro, reason have you seen the max the have you seen the maximum models, Harry? Oh, yeah, I watch them on TV, and same thing with the Outrunners. The pop they had think, a week ago or two weeks ago was crazy. They're getting pops with entertainment. entertaining. I, I think they're scared to put them against each other out there because they're going to get bigger pops than these people that are kill, killing themselves doing these these matches with these 90 false finishes, you know? So, um, I don't know. I, I would. I, I would I would put the belts on the Outrunners immediately and have them feud with the Maximum Male Models. You could do tons of character vignettes. Just, just, there's so much stuff you could do with those guys, you know? 
The yeah. only um, reason why the Bucks have the belts are is because they are part of the elite. But then out of nowhere, it's like okay, Okada. They has don't his need belt. them. That's my point. You should have belts. You put it on people that need them or really hot. They're neither. Yeah, they don't need saying. them, it's and like, they're not really hot right now. All, right, all, four, all four from the faction have belts, but they're not doing anything right now. It's like, what's the purpose of the elite right now? We don't know. Right. So next is uh, Tony Giovanni's on stage with Nana. is giving an update on Swerve. MVP comes out. And he introduced himself and Nana already knew who he was. Oops. Hang on. So lost my spot here real quick. Let me get right back to it. MVP <laughs> comes out, yeah, and he says that Nana says, I already know who you are. And MVP agreed that Swerve is the most dangerous man in AEW and said Swerve was the most phenomenal talent to ever step foot in the AEW ring. He says Swerve's title reign be studied by generations and mentioned the wrestlers that Swerve beat his champion and said he saw Swerve lose a title, have a shout and home burn to the ground and said Swerve's management was more concerned with selling coffee and shucking and jiving for the fans. MVP handed Nana a card and told Nana to give it to Swerve when he's ready to talk business. And Nana shook his head in disgust and looked at the card. MVP was good here, but if he's always good in everything yeah. he does. What'd you what did you guys think of this? What did you notice in MVP's promo that was like a little hint for the future? Oh, the... the, the, the Let what, me know the, when the, you're ready what? to talk business. No, prior to that, he kept saying Swerve was the best to ever step foot in AEW. Not the best in the world. I think that's the, that's going to be the end. He's hinting at Lashley. You know, Lashley. Yeah, they're trying. Be, yeah. They're bringing in what is it called the hurt business or the hurt whatever. Uh, well, I don't know. Sense, he's right? a good addition to the show because he's a he's a grown man that cuts and, grown man promos, you know. And just looking at the screen, you saw Nana dressing the way he was dressing, and then right. you saw MVP with the suit and tie, and you're like, "All right, one right. of these guys has been in it the right way for a long time, and the other one has been doing his thing on the side too." The only thing I would have added to that is why would Nana keep the card? I, I would have. I would have. When once MVP left, I would have burnt right. that. Exactly. I'm not your oh, messenger. So I would have was... said, I'm not your messenger. Ripped that in his mug and walked off. He kind of buried him. Cody, so what do, do you think? Do you think Swerve is joining the Hurt Business or whatever it's called? Or do you think it's going to be a faction battle right there between these? I think it'll be a faction battle. I think they got a good <laughs> thing going with the chemistry with Nan and him. Yeah. And you know. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story. This is a true story. It may not, may, this is a true story, but it may right. or may not be a true story. Right. AEW hired a new guy. Okay, and a new a new guy in creative, and he's in charge of video production, and he's in charge of making interesting vignettes. Okay, and his first one aired this past week. They showed Jack Perry driving across the New York bridge in his bread truck. Right. <laughs> that's that's the video. <laughs> They've been doing that for a couple of weeks, though. <laughs> it's like, I, bro, so I just think the funniest thing is, Harry, this is what he, this is our what fans he... loved it when Conan referred to this as a bread truck on the show because it does look like a bread truck. <laughs> the, and, and the crazy ass part is, like, apparently he is going from town to town in the truck because somebody once asked about it on social media, and Anna Jay posted a picture of her in the back while Jack Perry was driving it. I was like, oh, all right. All right. So next, goofy. next is my to me. I, I'm this is this is where they lose me on some of this. Is uh, I I can't understand how Yuka Sakazaki Sakazaki looks like she's 13 years old is wrestling for the women's championship against Mariah May, and because they have to have a match, Mariah May sometimes just literally stands there and lets Yakazaki grab her arms and twist her around and stuff and everything and doesn't really like put up any fight to to like let her do the moves to her. But this doesn't look believable at all. I mean, honestly, she should have beat this girl in two minutes. She beat her in six minutes and 10, 10 seconds. After the match, she stepped to hit Zek- Sakazaki with the title belt. But Willow Nightingale ran out in front of me. This should have actually been the match. I mean, Willow, could you imagine that? Willow Nightingale is like doesn't have the title match. This little this little girl does. And like, did you actually think like the little girl is going to beat this girl? And like, I don't know. So May used the distraction to hit Willow from behind with the oh, Minishira Shirakawa comes out overacting. She's hot though. And then it distracts Willow. So May hits Willow from behind. Shirakawa likes Willow. So she acted kind of like distraught. And then when May comes up and grabs Mina, grabs Mina they, they, they hug, she hugs her like, like she jumps up in her arms. And I don't know if this thing was supposed to end like this, but the Sak- Sakazaki girl came back into the scene and kind of like, like, kind of like was there. So they had to walk off the stage. 
And I don't know if it was supposed to end like that. I thought we were supposed to end. I would have ended it with the glamour shot of Mina Scherzer and May, like, you know, thing. But, and I don't know, like, that's why I think the Sakazaki girl did, wasn't supposed to do that because it came across very awkward. Did you agree with that? Conan, did you see the way that ended? Harry, you're nodding your head. You kind of got that feeling too, right? Yeah. And then I'll also add to this. Do you know where Willow Nightingale is from? <sighs> where? New York. Oh, New York. So she just it came made... out and got beat up and just... <laughs> Yeah, she's it from made, Long Island, isn't she? It made too much sense to have her in a championship match in her hometown against the the champ, right? It made too much sense, so that's because why they said, always okay, do she'll, that. She'll only do a run in on in the match. They always uh, they always sell to the hometowns too, right? That's your yeah. book of the year. I don't know. Yeah, no, um, it was. I'm a, an AEW mark, and I fast forwarded like after the first minute of the match, I fast forwarded just to the end to see what happened. But so the, here's a problem with this match. I wasn't invested in it because they did nothing to make this challenger credible. And I think that Maya lost a lot of steam since Tony left because that's where the money is. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, and, you know, it's just a, this, this is, I think as long as there's a, the match is good, that's all they care about over there. But as we saw in the Vince documentary, the whole six episodes, all that he talked about and everybody talked about wrestling's about moments, not great matches. Right. So next yeah, is uh about the making main money. Is, the next right. is about the main event Allen and, and Moxley. Um like I, I think you know Alan Darby is a, definitely an attraction because he just brings it in like a lot of his stuff and it looks very believable, even though he's small. But Allen, he got to, he went for this is a good spot. He goes for the coffin drop on Moxley and lands right into a rear naked choke. He reached the ropes and Moxley sent on the top rope and then pulled Allen into a chokehold and that this was pretty good. Then Allen reached out and gouged his eye to break free from him and then bit his head. Then Mina Shafir climbed on the apron while Allen was sent up for a superplex and Moxley countered into an avalanche DDP and scored the pin. So after the match, finally we're addressing what happened weeks before because Brian Danielson entered the ring with a hoodie on and choked Moxley with a necktie. Darby was helped to the back. Then Marina, Pack, and Claudio pulled Allen off Moxley. Then Commander and Private Party ran out to make the save. Bro, Joe, see if you can pull this up. The, the kid that came in there and started trading punches with, with, with Moxley clocked Moxley twice. Like for, for a shoot, I think, with his punches because they were, what do you call them? And, and you got you to gotta see this. It's, it's at the and very he even had his hand wrapped in something, too. I, yeah, I did wonder, you notice that? Did you notice yeah, that? Conan? I wonder did, if it's because they <laughs> pay potato guys before and they and maybe they put something over their hand. Uh, or, or maybe, but it looked I, I, like as a runner, I was like, okay, that looked good because it looked like he clocked the guy. Moxie had to sell, sell it for a shoot. So Danielson took the mic and recalled Moxie saying he won a war. And Danielson said, I, I declare war. Said Moxley could face him at Wrestle Dream. It'll kick Moxley's head in. And then the final countdown play while Danielson stood in the ring with the other baby faces. And Moxley was at ringside with his crew. Bro, they don't need, I mean, I know you're trying to give guys a rub, but come on. You, 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 commander and private party do not need to be a part of this. This is like a Bro, all issue. they do is go out every single week. This is like the third week in a row, Harry. I, you watch every show to just get destroyed. It's at the very end, Joe, way past this. In here in this mix. Okay, yeah, okay, come on, come on. Go yeah. back, go back. Oh, this right, is right, right here, the guy in the black? Yeah, right, right here, play. Yeah, right there. Okay, watch the guy that comes in and hits 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 Moxley. See how they got something in their hand, like a bandana yeah. or something? Oof. Both of them. Oof. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He did mess up his left hand because he clocked him twice in the head and Moxley looked like he sold it for a shoot. But that looked good. Like that, you know, th th this was one of the better run ins for Chaos because it looked like they're throwing live rounds. Because, like, I've seen a tons of tons of the run ins they do this week. Okada was doing run ins, everything. It looked like he was, he was like, like playing out there, like, like, like a kid. But this looked, this looked very physical. Like, this was actually the best stuff on the show, to be honest with you, for like physicality. You know, what did you think about that, Conan? I thought that, well, this match, I don't understand why Darby, who to me is the future of the company, he lost to Moxley. He didn't, Moxley could have taken the loss, helped make. 
<laughs> keep making Darby. So I don't know why why Darby, who's probably the most to me, the most interesting guy on the show, had to take that loss. You know, did you see when he put Allen's mouth on the rope and then kicked it and then he started bleeding from the mouth? Yeah. Yeah. He gets he gets teeth knocked out on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I don't understand why they have Shafir out there because for example, like when they back in the you can day take this when, off now, Joe. We don't have to go back over the whole back thing. in the day when they had China, remember? Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, she was imposing. She was big. She looked, you know, the part. This one really doesn't. Yeah. I think they want to play off of the part where it's like she used to be an MMA fighter. She's a judo black belt right. and this, this, and that. That on, for a shoot, she's really yeah. I like, know she's went, shoot, but, but, but she doesn't look imposing in the ring. Right. That's well, my it's point. It's diversity, equity, inclusion. They need a woman. You in know, like if you had Nia Jax <laughs> out there, somebody that size, you're like, all right, I can see it. But bro, she's not that big. All right, so you ready for my top five for the week, Conan? What do you think of the show overall? You uh, just, and, but and there, there, were, there were no real angles. It was just all matches and like all expected. Uh, what do you expected think of results. the show? What do you like? I was hoping for something better. I mean, that's what we've been used to in Grand Slam. No disrespect to MVP, but that was in a surprise where I was like, oh my God, MVP is now a part of right. AW. Because so you've been hearing for months he's probably going to go there anyways. Exactly. And it's like, well... It wasn't anything that I would be like, I I wish I didn't miss this live. I actually watched it this morning. So I was working and I had it right there, had my computer and right behind it, the TV. And the only part of the show that where I was like, okay, I'm going to stop working to watch because this looks really good. And I rewinded to watch it from the beginning was the tag team match, the championship match. Besides that, I was working while everything was going on. So. I kind of agree with everything you said. I think the main thing for me was there was one good match, which was the Young Bucks. And and I like Darby. Anything he does, I like because he always makes it look real. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.